guys, you're listening to the Bee Bowl Bee Birmingham podcast. We're here to dance to the beat of Brum's drum. We're here to sing the soul of our city. Birmingham 2022 is just around the corner and we're here to showcase what an amazing city Birmingham is. We have some amazing guests, but of course I'm your host, Melzy J, and I've got my lovely Benjamin here. Hey Melzy. Hi Ben, how we're are still, you? I'm all right, but we're still on Zoom, aren't we? We're still zooming it out. Well, we're doing a good job, so we still get to see each other once a week. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's nice to see it, even if it is through a screen. Enough about you, Ben. Let's go over to our amazing guest. We have True Powell, multi-award winner, creative entrepreneur and publicity expert. He's passionate about performing arts as he's the creative director of Aston Performing Arts Academy. How are you, True? I am very, very well, thank you. And I absolutely loved the introduction about, you know, dancing to Birmingham's beat and to the soul of the city. Oh, love it all. And I'm just really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Amazing. We couldn't do a podcast without getting true power on, could we? Absolutely. But of course, we can't forget Luke Tong, one of the hottest guys in Birmingham for graphic design. He spends his time teaching at the Birmingham City University. Hang as on, a can, we just, can, can we just call him one of the hottest guys in Birmingham? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm claiming that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I what think we'll have a bit of competition with, with that, Luke. Yeah, right, you know? yeah. <laughs> we'll give it you in graphics. Okay. <laughs> You're also director it. of the Birmingham Design Festival. How are you, Luke? I am stoked to be here too. Um, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Amazing. Now, obviously, I've done you guys an introduction about who you are, but I really want to hear from yourselves. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Over to yourself first, True. Oh, thank you. So, um, so as you, you mentioned, my name is True Powell and... Um, I am a creative entrepreneur by nature. I always say that I was created by the creator to be creative. And I live by that. I love everything creativity. I love eat, sleep and dream creativity um, and, and really provide platforms for people to express that. Um, I help people, entrepreneurs mainly, with their personal branding and their publicity and getting visible and mainly work with creative entrepreneurs as well as kind of running multiple different businesses in the region as well as sitting on many different boards including the Hippodrome um, and and the West Midlands Tourism Board and the Tag Network Midland Board um, and and so forth and um, I'm a husband I'm a father which is actually the the most important role of all and one that I take extremely seriously and um, and one that I'm I'm privileged to have, and yeah, I'm just and I'm happy, I'm I'm genuinely happy. So I'm all that and more. And That's just a lovely to pick introduction up. that is. Absolutely lovely. And just to pick up on that, you're a lovely family man. I constantly see pictures of you and your family on Instagram and it just makes me feel like one day that's going to be me married with 3.5 children <laughs> it gives it's me not all that it's cracked up to be with my kids I tell you it's not all that it's cracked up to be <laughs> and what about yourself Luke tell us a little bit about yourself who you are and what you do Wow. Well, I'm, I'm feeling uh, in the shadow of true now so uh, <laughs> I, I should have gone first um Similar to True, I think in terms of the mission that I feel that I'm on earth to do, um, certainly within the design community. So I wear a lot of hats. Um, I am an independent graphic designer after 10 or so years in industry. I went freelance, so I, I run my own business. Um, but as you mentioned, I'm also part of the team that runs Birmingham Design, which is an organization which also runs the Birmingham Design Festival. Uh, and I spend a lot of my time really focused on community, um, helping people kind of bridge education and industry which can be quite a daunting leap uh, especially for for young people so yeah that's why i'm happiest i do a lot of mentoring uh also sit on various boards and trusteeships and that sort of thing advising where i can but i'm, I'm at my happiest either behind the keyboard doing some design work or speaking with young people something that um something that's true for both of you in sort of researching this 
um, this uh, episode of the podcast, which is all about opportunity. That's sort of the heart of this episode. Um, something that's definitely true for both of you is it's quite difficult to sum up what you both do. You, you, you do a lot of different things. It's quite difficult to follow when, you, when you're sort of going in and uh, having a look at all your social medias and everything like that. You both do a lot, but you both do a lot for other people. Um, so I wondered, um, I, w I wondered, Luke, maybe I'd like to ask this to both of you, but uh, I want to maybe start with you, Luke. What, what is it about helping people that you're that you're drawn to? It's a very good question. Um, I think there's a couple of different aspects to it. One is certainly for me that I have experienced enormous privilege. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a a white male in an industry where that gives you an automatic leg up. So I immediately understand and recognize that privilege and feel an enormous responsibility to not take that for granted. So sometimes that means helping other people as much as I can. Sometimes it means just getting out of the way and not being the person in the room taking up the space. Um, so that, that's a big part of it. But I, I definitely, you know, I was probably less aware of that 10 or 15 years ago. Um, so I think a lot of it's to do with my upbringing. I was brought up in a Christian household, um, person of faith. So I believe that there's kind of a, there's more to life than just making loads of money. Uh, it's about what you can do to help other people along the way. So that's another big part of it and part of, I guess, what's formed my character. Um, and then some of it is probably a little bit selfish in that helping people feels really good. Um, you know, the most rewarding part of anyone's day, I would think, is when you know that you've done something good for someone else. And that can be a big thing or a small thing but that's certainly been my experience that it's enormously rewarding so there's a little bit of the um yeah a little bit selfish that that that's the bit that feels really good that's a great answer um luke H how about you true wow luke you are an out and out g i absolutely <laughs> love He's a g. that answer seriously and um you know i i i'm i'm pretty much the same i um firstly i i grew up in a well, I grew up in a Christian household and I'm a Christian myself and a practicing Christian. And, you know, I, I do believe that when you give, um, you get it back tenfold. Um, I'm, and I'm a living testament to that. Um, when you platform others, other people will platform you. Um, and it's just really about providing that platform for others and providing those opportunities for others and to be selfless um, because that's what you know Jesus was to us um he was constantly giving and I try and walk in the eyes of of Jesus um and um I try and I try and live by that so that's like the first golden rule for me um kind of like you know W um JD what would Jesus do is something that I, I live by mm -hmm. um and then the the, the second thing really is I it's it's about legacy building for me and what do I want to leave and I don't want to leave and then when people are speaking at my funeral touch wood they're saying that I left with all this money but I didn't help anyone or I didn't make an impact on any single person that for me would be absolutely devastating I would rather people have the conversation around how true was amazing because he was constantly giving he helped me get my first job he helped me develop confidence he helped me win this or help me do that or help my business to scale or whatever the case may be for me it's about legacy and impact as opposed to being self-absorbed and what i can have for myself i think so that's a really really great point there that you both made in terms of your foundation was christianity you were brought up in that kind of household where you had certain set of morals or you know ways and how you should live your life obviously the youth of today is different how do you kind of feel like the youth of today need support like yourselves to kind of take that step forward to be in the position that you guys are in luke you can go first dare i go first gosh yeah that's a big question um i mean there's certainly plenty of people of faith out there, you know, of all different faiths and mm -hmm. have different moral frameworks. I do think you're right that there's been generational change over the last hundred years, certainly in the UK and all across the world. And we've seen some of the ways that society has changed. And, you know, some, some of that definitely makes things harder for young people now, I think. Um, and a lot of, I would certainly, I hope that True would echo this, you know, role models are 
uh, not just few and far between, you know, they're everywhere, but they're not always good for young people. And the, the things that are glorified in the media and the pursuit of fame. And, you know, you hear these stats that when young people are asked what they want to be when they're older and they just say a celebrity or famous or a YouTuber, because they, they see that as the pinnacle rather than necessarily having a passion that they want to follow to be really good at something. And I think often when you speak to young people, you unlock or you can you can help them unlock that there is things within them that they love to do, that they're passionate about, whatever that might be. You know, for, for me, a lot of that is to do with creativity just because of the people that I'm speaking to. But you see that across the board, that, that young people do have passions and have dreams and things. But I think they've been sold a bit of a lemon with this idea that just money will make you happy or fame will make you happy. And I, I love what True said about legacy. Um, and I would use the word significance as well. Like, I think it, it's really... It, it's a good thing to be ambitious to make a significant impact on the world and to leave a legacy of having done something worthy of your time here you know we're we don't know how long we're given and we're all given a different lot of circumstances that we exist within and confines and boundaries etc and, and i think we've all got an enormous responsibility to to try and do the best that we can with what we're given um and i think often young folk maybe just haven't had that explained to them and they haven't necessarily realized the possibilities that are out there for them and so they maybe pursue certain things that are not going to necessarily lead them to the you know a happy and stable lifestyle where they can really fulfill their potential so that's part of how i would look at it i definitely would agree there luke i think role models having the right role models is really really important obviously with mm. social media changing every young person has access to social media now and i know when i was growing up i had little youth clubs to go to or other women in my family that i could turn to for advice or an auntie's friend and i do feel like that it's changed over the generations do you know what yeah. i mean um i think also like representation is like really really important because you can have a role model but then if that role model doesn't necessarily look like you or has the same experience as you then how are you going to resonate with that person how are you gonna look at that person and think oh i could potentially be in that position you know um true why do you think representation is so important for young people oh what a good question um representation is crucially important and i say that because you know people say you you've you've got to see it to believe it and that it's got to be tangible and i think young people need to see themselves in other people who are in positions of authority um it's it's and it's not even just for some of the oppressed communities or oppressed groups that need to see it. but it's also for you know white young people who are you know who are middle class and 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 live in a certain um area because they need to see you know other communities in positions of authority so they respect and treat everybody the, the same but i just i it's it's incredibly important that we fight to put you know oppressed groups in positions where young people can see themselves and um, and can believe to achieve and, and, and it's tangible. At, when I was growing up, there was hardly anybody who looked like me that was an entrepreneur. And to me already, that's a stumbling block that, you know, that's an, an access issue that say, can I really be this? Because there's nobody that looks like me. And for a long time, because of that, because I didn't see anybody that looked like me, I, and not to say that this was a bad thing, because I believe that every entrepreneur should venture and do some form of, of, of paid employment to understand that they truly want to be an entrepreneur. Um, and, but because of that, I spent too long in the rat race, even when, you know, something was telling me that I actually should be doing something different. I actually should be running my own businesses, but rather than going out and, and, and taking that leap, and it wasn't because I was fearful. Um, yes, fearful was a big factor, mm -hmm. but I was fearful because of I because I didn't see that representation. I didn't see anybody that looked like me growing up. It felt very surreal. It felt like it was a, a huge hurdle. It didn't feel real. It didn't feel like we, we were allowed 
in that space and that space was for a certain demographic and I think it's really really important that we start speaking to the to the subconscious mind of some of these young kids who are looking for opportunities and looking for things to do but don't see themselves in it. I, I saw a, um, I was reading on your blog, I saw a, um, a post that you'd made about an awards uh, ceremony. Mm -hmm. Was it? Um, uh, I think it was uh, one year you'd gone there and you'd, and you'd said, similar to what you just said there, where it's like you're in this profession now, you are an entrepreneur, and there's still nobody getting up on that stage that looks like you. And I think you took, well, maybe you could tell the story of the photo and then coming mm -hmm. back a year later, was it a year later? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember this clearly. So I, I went to this awards ceremony and I remember that out of all, I think it was 12 winners, they were all white. There was not one person of colour that was that won an award. And I also remember the, um, so I remember looking at that anyway and thinking this is really wild. And what was wild to me was nobody seemed to have seen it. It was just me that seen it. And I was like, can nobody see what's happening here? So I remember thinking to myself, right, I need to win one of these awards. So I need, I need to see myself winning it. I need to, so I took, I just picked up a winning board. I grabbed the photographer and I said, right, take a picture of me with this board that said winner. Um, I wasn't nominated or anything like that. Um, I just remember like thinking, this is really wild. Um, so he took a picture of me being a winner and I put that picture on on um on my wall and I says this I'm going to win this award the following year. I'm going to be the change that I want to see. I'm going to allow people to look at me and, and believe that it's possible, believe that it's tangible because they can see a real life example. And I, you know, I was true to my word, no pun intended. And I <laughs> I went I went down there and I, I, I won the won won the award. And I think what was incredibly you know disheartening about the first year when I went was um, it was almost like the press covered this event, they covered these, you know, the, the, these award winners and they were on a balcony and the picture was them looking down and it was, and it kind of, I think the headline was the future of Birmingham. And it made me, honestly, I felt physically sick seeing a picture of an all white, panel of 12 award winners saying this is the future of Birmingham I'm like we're the most the most multicultural city how could this be the representation and I literally thought I, I cannot I cannot allow my my children to see that and think that that's the future and 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 feed them with these lies and feed them with this you know with this kind of white supremacist ideologies around how business is and I was like it, it can't it can't happen and I was like, I'm, I'm from that day, I'm going to put myself in those positions where I can be the change that I want to see and I can be the change for, for my kids. And so I do do a lot of awards and stuff like that. And actually I've, I've created a, um, a awards list on my website. There's over a hundred award ceremonies, which are all different types of awards. So from you know, um, from, you know, you get all community awards, you get like um, entrepreneurship awards, industry awards, but it's all on one list. So anybody from, you know, any person from Kola or any other community can look on that list and think, I'm going to apply for this. I want to apply for that. I want to apply for this. So if any of the listeners want to, wants to download, it's absolutely free. It's on my website, truepower.com. Go and download it and highlight some of the awards that you can apply for where you can start being the change that you want to see. So Luke, you obviously work with a lot of young people in terms of education. Mm. You're currently a lecturer at Birmingham City University. Can you talk me about talk to me about the education opportunities for students that are interested in design yeah of course uh, and i think if i can i'd like to just touch a bit more on that representation and diversity issue because it, it's it's a massive part of the responsibility that i feel as someone working in the education space that you know so many of the students that i've had the privilege of talking to and <clears throat> teaching over the last few years are not white and yet they see white representation in industry all the time, white panels, white speakers, you know, so much of that. And there's a big disconnect there and there's a big gap. And I know that I'm not, you know, one person's not gonna change that. And, and 
be able to model something that I'm not because I'm obviously speaking from a position of privilege but there's things that we try and do so the connection with um, the university and the design festival that I help run you know we have te we sell tens of thousands of tickets every year to this event and so we take very seriously the responsibility to make sure we have a really diverse speaker lineup where students my students can come along and see people that look like them 10 15 20 years down the line so that they know that industry is a place for them and I think that's that's really important um, so that's part of um, kind of the mission that I feel that I'm on with young people is to, to try and show all people that there's a place for them in industry and actually the more diverse and multicultural and cosmopolitan it is the better it is for everyone because that's the world we live in and if it's just a small percentage of people making the decisions about how adverts should be you know how products should be marketed and how advertisements should speak to people etc it's only going to narrow things rather than make things you know really engaging for all people yeah um yes. I've lost trail of the original question that you asked, Martin. <laughs> uh, the answer, whatever the question was, was fantastic. The answer was great. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, opportunities in Birmingham. Yeah, I, th I think there's loads. Um, I think opportunities are a word that I'm sure we'll come back to and we've talked about a bit. But um, we're certainly trying to, with the platform of Birmingham Design, which is a website and also, you know, a series of events and meetups and things. Um, that is designed to help bridge that gap. So if people have left education or even if they've not entered education, but they're looking for a way into industry in Birmingham, in the creative industries, they can come to us, they can join the Slack group, they can join up for our email listings, they can add themselves as a freelancer on our find a freelancer section, they can check out the agency listings, they can find places to apply to. So it's about providing, like True is, free resources to people so that they can feel that there's a place for them, they know where to start, they can be part of our community, um, and that there's no kind of barriers for them to, to get involved. And uh, and you mentioned, Luke, um, earlier about that, that sort of bridge from education and into the industry. You mentioned that right yeah. at the start. I don't know whether you could uh, just touch on, on that and how that works. Yeah, sure. So I guess I, I see myself as a bit of a living bridge, if that's not too weird or cliched a thing to say, in that I, I feel like academia is an amazing place, but it's a place where a lot of people can kind of end up and there isn't always a lot of young um engaged people that are necessarily you know academia is seen as quite a can be quite a stuffy or quite an aloof or quite you know closed uh, stale male pale kind of environment and it isn't <laughs> that and it, and it shouldn't be that but it but it can be um and so i'm really passionate that people that are still active in industry are also active in education because that then inspires young people to see that, you know, industry is a really dynamic and thriving and exciting place to be. You can speak with confidence and clarity about how things really are, not just about how they used to be 20, 30 years ago. And I think then you can, you can start to help people make their way from one area to the other. So you can help them engage with industry, get placements, uh, you know, enter the right schemes, find funding, find support, attend events, etc. And I'm not saying that, uh, you know, academics don't do that. I'm sure they do do that. But there's, there's definitely space and a need for uh, people of my generation to help be that kind of conduit for the next generation before I'm old and I've lost my marbles and <laughs> I'm uh, thinking about hanging up my hat. <laughs> yeah, and awesome. they also actually get an opportunity to exhibit their work, right? I think you did something in the bull ring where they had an opportunity to showcase their work. Yeah, so we, um, every year as part of the design festival, we usually have some kind of exhibition. That isn't always open. That's not kind of necessarily open to everyone. But this last year, because of COVID, uh, we did something called the Creative City, which was a phrase that I felt really strongly about that Birmingham is. Um, and that, you know, Birmingham sometimes suffers from a lack of confidence on the world stage. And I'm sure, you know, that perception is going to be shifted, thank goodness, this year with the Commonwealth. But um, we've definitely noticed that within the creative industries that sometimes it doesn't necessarily play the role of Second City. And yet there's so much amazing talent here and opportunity. So we, we ran with that as a theme and we had 100 people um, produce a poster in response to that brief. And that was exhibited at the Custard Factory and in a catalogue and various different things. But then the Bullring had seen some of that work and they approached us and they said, could they exhibit it for close to a year um, over three floors in the Debenhams end of the Bullring? So that was an amazing opportunity for all of those people, many of whom were students, current and former students of mine and people that had never had their work seen in an exhibition 
to have that kind of platform to see their work out there in the city and to have tens of thousands of people looking at it and, and commenting on it is a, a really great another one of those platforms that we're able to offer people yeah it's awesome absolutely really cool. love that talking about platforms and and <laughs> creatives true you are working alongside director of aston performing arts academy i actually witnessed this beautiful choir at your award ceremony last year and it literally took me back to church like not church like church you know <laughs> where you've got the church <laughs> you've got the, you've got the harmonies you've got the male singers you've got the female singers you've got everybody coming together as one tell us a little bit about your role at aston performing arts academy and also how can i join and be part of the choir group <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Thank you for that, Mousy. And I think, as you could see, I smile every time I speak about Aston Performing Arts Academy because I feel so privileged and honoured to be able to lead such an amazing group of young people, amazingly talented at, at what they do. And when we come together, it's just dynamite. And, you know, you... Uh, you know, we've been doing Aston Performing Arts Academy for 15 plus years now. And I think for me, it's incredibly important that we have something positive that's well documented and that's well seen and that's so visible from an area, a disadvantaged area that a lot of people have disregarded um, and has stereotyped as violence or gangs, B6 and all of that, predominantly black kids from this area and show a different type of child or a different type of black child that the world hasn't seen and it's incredibly important that i take that role very seriously it's important that i create space for these black children and it's not just for black children but that's who predominantly use our service and you know when i was growing up um, with when I was living in Aston and Newtown, um, being involved in the creative space, in the um, performing arts space, as a young black boy living, growing up in the 90s, in the inner city area of Birmingham, that wasn't cool. Like, that was, you, you know, both my brother and I was ridiculed. We were you know, told that we were less of a men and all this toxic masculinity BS. And, you know, it was just really, really awful. And I think at that point we we vowed and promised ourselves that when we can and when we're, we come of age, we're going to create space for these young black boys to really express themselves in the creative art space and, and to do it unapologetically and to create a safe space for that because that wasn't something that we had. So to see... Aston Performing Arts and to see them on different platforms like, you know, going into Selfridges, going into Boring, performing at all these award ceremonies and to see the black boy singing Spice Girls, for me, is just the pinnacle of purpose and the pinnacle of success because we've literally said what we were going to do. We were going, but, mm -hmm. and, and it's been, it surpassed all my expectations and more the stages that we've been on the people that we've met you know the lives that we've transformed and affected is literally mind-blowing and i'm just i feel so privileged and honored to be a part of that journey in researching this podcast when i came across the um, the academy uh there was a i clicked on a link to to listen to a song it's a song that i know very well it's a song that was in the the car tape player when i was a kid my mom and dad had it it's a letter adams get here and um, the performance was a Zoom performance during lockdown um, uh, of these of these uh, of these kids singing this song, and I, I had not, never heard of the Academy, and I thought, you know, en en enough to battle with, let alone the fact that we're doing it over Zoom. Let's see how it sounds. Click play, and oh my word! Like if you haven't listened to it, Luke, if you haven't listened to it, go and check it out. I'll send you a link afterwards. Anyone listening? 
go and listen to it. These kids are incredible. And I don't mind telling you that I was crying my eyes out. Such oh. a powerful song at a time when, um, when we couldn't all be together, a song about wanting to be together. And these kids just singing it with all their heart. Like you say, like these young, these young, young boys singing their hearts out. And you just don't, you don't, you don't see it. You don't expect it. And that, that video alone is like, it, it will blow you away. It's incredible. And, and it's a, cre it's a credit to you and everyone involved. It's just an Thank amazing. Thank you thing. so much. I, I actually remember that time. And, you know, I remember going into lockdown and when we went into lockdown, of course, I've run many businesses and many face-to-face -face businesses and um, experience led businesses and events businesses and, and Aston Performing Arts was one of those organisations that were really affected. And my first reaction was, when the lockdown was announced was oh my goodness me the academy like what are we going to do with our young people because you've got to remember we rehearse twice a week where well, we are family so you know we we take them away from their family and and, and school and and we rehearse at least six hours out of the week collectively hmm. um so immediately that was gone um from lockdown and I just remember thinking there's no way we can't be a service to our young people like we we have to quickly do something and we we had <clears throat> learned to get here um a couple of years before and um and just the songs that we kind of learnt and was messing around with the arrangements and stuff and and i just remember saying to my brother like we need to revisit this song and we need to reteach it across Zoom to those who haven't learnt it. And we need to create that feeling of togetherness because we can't be physically together, but we will be collectively together and music will bring us together. Mm -hmm. And I just remember just listening to um the one the one the one part when there was there are hills and mountains between us always something to get over and i it, that bit just resonated with me because there were literally hills and mountains between us that separated us and we just needed to be together and it just perfectly encapsulated what we were going through and we just felt like we let's just record it and everyone do their own individual parts and we'll try our very best to put it together and i mean don't get me wrong the editing's absolutely shocking i mean um no <laughs> it's though not, it's, it's not. really uh, not also also it's a it's a moment in time that whenever you know in 50 years time in 100 years time in 200 years time whatever you mm -hmm. hear you, if you check that video out it sums up a whole time that does it's incredible mm, thank it's incredible. you thank you so much i appreciate it and I, I i get really excited when people appreciate the art in the same in the way that we intend to deliver it yeah. so thank you so uh moving on a bit of an all-round question here it's a bit of an open one um so uh, take it however you like but um we'll start with you luke is birmingham full of opportunity <laughs> yes uh, is the easy answer i think it is um i think probably what qualifies or what what has to come immediately after that is a but access is sometimes difficult right. and i think there's there's all i'm always learning about new things that i didn't know were either happening or available or had sprung up in birmingham so <clears throat> i feel like the, there's definitely lots of things out there obviously the flip side of that coin is there's lots of people out there so that doesn't mean that you know everyone can have access to everything all the time and of course, sometimes the people that want it most go out and find it, but that can mean that sometimes the people who, you know, just physically don't have access or, or can't get into things or have some kind of impediment or disability or, mm -hmm. you know, problem or situation, circumstance mean that they, they don't have access to things. So I think, I think making things as accessible as possible in the truest sense, not just like a ramp and a hearing loop or whatever it might be, but taking things out to people and really broadcasting them well and making sure that as many people know about things as possible means that as, as broad and as um, deserving an audience as possible can find them and access them. So I think, yeah, yeah definitely there's loads of opportunity. And I, I can say that as someone who came from a, a small town, grew up in a small village, hadn't really experienced city life, you know, was it one bus came through our village a day, that sort of place. 
to to being in you know such a vibrant and amazing city it feels like the world's your oyster here and you can be you can be a big fish in a in a a moderate sized pond i don't feel you know the vibe is so different to london where you you go and it feels like you you just get swallowed and disappear and there's so much stuff happening in in birmingham it feels manageable and it Mm -hmm. feels kind of like that things are attainable but equally i think that access piece is still is something we should never get complacent about just because there's loads of great stuff happening it doesn't mean that everyone knows about it and it doesn't mean that everyone has access to it so uh, uh, it's a yes but for me yes there's loads of opportunity but there's there's definitely work to do to make it visible how about you true i completely agree with um luke and i think it would be unfair for me not to comment upon it and i love birmingham i do but just because i love birmingham it doesn't necessarily mean that it's exempt from white supremacist patriarchy and it doesn't mean that it's exempt and that it's it's, and that it's as inclusive as it should be you know and you know we live in a a world a society that is made for white heterosexual straight christian men and that's who gets the access and the more that you move away from that the less access that you get and 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 the harder that it is and you know i i've been very fortunate to be in the position that i'm in particularly being in birmingham um because i you know i work really hard but you question would i have to work as hard as i'm working if i was a white male no i wouldn't but also i have to comment upon you know, black women and black women accessing certain spaces. I, I, you know, I find it a catastrophe that we hardly have any senior black women in positions of power in the city. Okay, we we now have Deborah Cadman and that's amazing. Um, you know, shout out Deborah. Um, but that's it. And... And it's not because they're not working hard. It's not because that they're not talented. It's not because that they're not gifted. It's because they're not given the opportunity and the access that everybody else is afforded. And it 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 it's it's a crying shame and it's a catastrophe. And I think, like Luke said, we must not get complacent. Birmingham's a great city. It's full of opportunity, but for some more than others. And we need to make it an equal living playing field and we need to speak about it and we need to raise it so there are communities or certain demographics that have equity in this we ask everybody on the podcast what makes birmingham bold it is the be bold be birmingham podcast so it's only right that i send this question to my lovely guest today so true what makes birmingham bold for you Oh, that's a really, really good question. And I think what makes Birmingham bold for me is the fact that we continuously strive to be better. We have a sense of togetherness and community. And I know it probably sounds like I'm contradicting what I I, I said earlier, um, but we, we, you know, when we're so in in tuned with with one another and we support one another and we stand together and you know as as much as we're not equal I mean you know we recognize that you know there's some has privileges and, and, and some doesn't I think what I like about Birmingham is that you know people are are willing to listen to different experiences they're willing to stand shoulder to shoulder they're not submissive they're willing to listen and learn and and implement and i think that doesn't that doesn't happen in every city um and i you know i'm just appreciative of that um and i also think that we're we're bold because we are quite unapologetic in what we we do and we always strive to be more we always strive to be better we always strive to be greater and i think birmingham is just the city that i you know i absolutely love and um and i love being a part of and i just think we've got so much talent here and i'm sorry another another thing (laughs) is that we are so underestimated Mm. i think people underestimate the talent that we have in this city but i'm telling you now 
do not sleep on Birmingham. Like, people have been sleeping on Birmingham for too long. They need to wake up. They need to wake up because there's going to be a rude awakening. Mark my words. I think there's uh, quite a lot of people have said uh, similar, uh, maybe slightly less Same. passionate, but similar yeah. um, <laughs> similar statements. And especially with the, with the light of the um, Commonwealth Games coming here, you know, we're, there is a stage that Birmingham will be on. There will be eyes on us. And, and, and you're right, like people have been sleeping on Birmingham. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe the Commonwealth Games is a great opportunity to sort of uh, showcase uh, what's really going on. Um, mm. how, about, how about you, Luke? Uh, what makes Birmingham bold? Yeah, great question. Uh, I think Brummies make Birmingham bold. Uh, mm. And I think the great thing about Brummies, or being a Brummie, is you don't have to be born here to be a Brummie. I'm not, you know, I'm an incomer. I've been here 15 years or so, but I count myself really fortunate to identify as a Brummie. And I think there's a, the other thing, or the, the main thing, and I guess True summed this up really well, is that underdog spirit that Birmingham's been so ridiculed and o- overlooked and, you know, in, in so many small and big ways that that's contributed to that spirit of uh, just kind of that DIY gritty attitude mm. of like, well, do you know what, if, if people aren't going to recognize the talent or if people aren't going to come here for certain things or if funding's going elsewhere or whatever it might be, then just crack on and do it yourself. And I think that t- takes us back to opportunity that opportunity doesn't always come on a plate. Sometimes it's it's just that you have to go out there and do it. And I feel that kind of DIY attitude really runs through Birmingham. And I think it's probably because of that underdog status that um, it's just not been given its fair due for so long. And, uh, you know, it's well overdue. And I, and I see change happening, which really excites me to be part of Birmingham because I don't think, I think in five or 10 years, people won't be saying it's the underdog anymore. They'll be realizing, you know, that the talent and the, the wealth of amazing community that is here. But um, it's exciting to see that, that shift starting to happen. Yeah, what an exciting place to be. What an exciting Love time that. to be in an exciting place. Hashtag 0121. <laughs> yes, Melzi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Thank you so much for joining me today, Luke and Drew. It's been absolutely amazing having you guys as guests on the Be Bold Be Birmingham podcast. You can access the podcast on the Birmingham City Council YouTube page, Be Bold Be Birmingham. Make sure you tell everybody that's interested in the Commonwealth Games, everybody that's in Birmingham and outside Birmingham as well. Let them know we've got episodes coming for you. That's about it, isn't it, Ben? I think so, Mousy. Um, thank thanks so, so much, much for your time, guys. Thank you for See having you us. See you soon. Uh, Bye. Bye. See you.